Terminal 3 at Delhi's Indira Gandhi International Airport, a new gem in the crown of India's tenacious capital city. An ambitious project that will be the gateway to the aspirations of many, catapulting India's capital into an aviation hub. My intention is how to modernize this. Within the 90 days, there is a quickly how to some have impact. The two runways is there, third runway is not there at that time. Our attitude, positive attitude, and to not to give up, never give up, and uh, the, and also uh, the, our main all team in, uh, the intention is we want to build a national asset. That is a spirit made it it happen. Vision was that to to create an infrastructure, create an airport which will be the the first touch point to India, and then and that, and that increase the pride and and respect uh, in each of us uh, as in Indians. We started landing on the airports. And we visited most of the global airports we visited. And we interacted with a number of professionals. We understand what is the airport business, how it is making an economic growth for, uh, for the country. A mammoth task completed against the backdrop of a looming deadline to the Commonwealth Games 2010. Thousands of workers construct India's largest post-independence building with unrelenting speed. Technology was very much part of that system. I cannot change my specifications. I can't change the pipe. What are your deliverables at that stage? This mega project brought in some of the brightest minds from across the world to design and build a state-of-the-art structure. Yes, like this. Follow this team as they faced mind-numbing engineering challenges of installing a 45-acre roof and battled an unusual force. Everybody said, no way, I can't put my name into this project because it is seemingly impossible task before us. Watch this barren stretch of land on the outskirts of South Delhi where a spectacular terminal megastructure comes to life in a record 37 months. One of Asia's largest airport terminals located in New Delhi. Terminal 3 is a symbol of India's emerging economic status. With a capacity of 34 million passengers per year, it propels the Indira Gandhi International Airport into one of Southeast Asia's most important aviation hub. This complex mega project challenged the creators, the GMR Group, at every stage of construction. Enabling the Delhi airport to achieve a milestone of handling 73 aircraft movements in an hour, Terminal 3 is the first of its kind in India. Delhi 2006 a city of 14 million. The aviation sector was booming. But natural that at least 10% of Indians would fly in the next decade. The government-run airline sector was privatized in the mid-90s and opened out to several national and international players since 2004. 16 million domestic and international travelers were flying through Delhi annually. The pressure was just too much for the existing airport. There was something of an aviation gridlock, a traffic jam in the skies. So we had to make sure that our airport, the Delhi airport and the Mumbai airport were good enough to cater to the needs of the next 25 years or so and at least handling 50 to 100 million passengers. On the southern outskirts of Delhi, lay 300 acres of flat land, three times the smallest country, 
the Vatican City. In 37 months, this is where the new terminal rose. On completion, it is said to be one of the largest and fastest built airports. An aerotropolis that represents modern Indian aspirations and infrastructure. In Feb 2004, bids were opened out by the government for the new terminal. The men behind the scenes had to be prepared for fierce competition. We uh, prepared almost for one year before uh, and we put the best uh, people uh, assembled for the bidding. I should say it is a God-given opportunity uh, to fly the flag of GMR in the capital city of Delhi. So that is the commitment which uh, made us to win this bid. January 31st, 2006. The GMR Group won the bid, but for a company that started with agriculture-based industries and had slowly moved into the infrastructure space over the past decade, getting the basics right was tougher than it seemed. GMR was new to the business of building airports, but raring to take off. German GM Rao, the man behind the vision, set out the roadmap for the project. We have taken almost 16 international consultants we have taken. And for us, that time to spending 34 crores for bidding is a huge money for me. Heading the project was I.P. Rao. Children, that's the work job. I need in two, three days time to hold to that, that just will change. An industrial engineering veteran, having worked on several power and steel projects in the past. I.P. Rao was the angry young man of the airport. Silent, strong and religious. Rao's mantra was that the belief in something can make it happen. The terminal was his baby. But he had never built an airport of this scale before. His biggest fear was the deadline. This week overall, what is the finish shortfall here? We will definitely fall short of the cable. 37 months to build the airport from scratch. Once it's over, I want to sign off, seal it, then you can go full fledged. Typically, construction of new terminals across the world takes over 60 months. Changi Airport's T3 in Singapore took 76 months. Beijing's T3 took 60 months. And so did Heathrow's Terminal 5. From concept to commission. At the very start of the project, IP Rao was faced with a challenge that tested his leadership. The GMR group had bagged the country's most prestigious project, but then came a twist. They requested us to shift the terminal from one side to another side. We have taken over the terminal which was built in 1940s, and then uh, after takeover, immediately people were expecting that miracles would be done. There were certain parameters which they fixed that we got to change them. It was a terminal which was built only for about 12 million passengers, but then uh, it was already handling 16.2 million passengers by that time. It was a Herculean task, but we were able to do it. How to do that? So, gentlemen, let's jump back up. It was April 2006. The master plan that GMR had presented was based on the government brief, but that had to be changed. It now had to come up at a location 180 degrees from where it was originally planned. Get more people, designers on the table, get all of you, and then sit down. I need in bold design and just to change. This had many implications. Also, at the time of the bid, the government had proposed the terminal for 22 million passengers, but GMR conducted a study along with the travel trade industry and learned that the terminal needed to have a capacity of up to 34 million passengers. That was 12 million more. Certainly not a small change. The GMR team worked furiously on revising the master plan. The whole passenger requirement has been tremendously changed. More than one half times have been jumped, and then you have to redo the entire building and reroute the entire area. That's really given a big challenge for us. The GMR group studied various international airports, like Dubai International Airport, 
Beijing Capital Airport, Seoul Incheon International Airport, London's Heathrow and Madrid's Barajas Airport to incorporate the best for Delhi's new terminal. Finally, in December 2006, the new plan was approved. The new passenger terminal building rises nine levels, covers an area of 5.4 million square feet, approximately 94 football fields. The design is futuristic, with a strong emphasis on keeping it eco-friendly. Passenger flow is natural and instinctive, either moving towards the aircraft or away from it. Below them, almost 7 kilometers of baggage conveyor belts hurtle through making for five levels of high-end automated security screening. At 4.43 kilometers, the airport's runway is the longest runway in Asia. Once the design parameters were fixed, the construction got underway, but it was not as simple as it seemed. I should really give credit to the government that first time a private airport operator, a private company was called into a national facilitation committee, which was headed by the cabinet secretary and monitored by the prime minister himself. They were people to understand our challenges and then they were been, they've been pretty helpful for us to get clearances. Delhi airport, because the time is very short we have, so we have to do planning, designing, identifying a contractor. At the same time, implementing the project is was going on very parallelly. Larson and Tubro, one of India's largest construction and engineering conglomerates, took on the runway, taxiway, aprons and the terminal building. When we got into it to mobilize nearly 1,000 engineers from more than 40, 50 nationalities and to mobilize 30,000 workmen, to mobilize concrete production of uh, you know, nearly 1,000 cubic meters per day. At first, the land was flattened out and then the earth excavated, enough to fill a 210 kilometer long freight train. This project needed tons of steel, concrete and other building materials. Bringing it into Delhi from across state borders posed a challenge. Heavy transport trucks can come into Delhi only between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. We used to plan with the Delhi police, sat with them, so these are the trucks have been verified. We are given separate uh, squad for them. So these trucks have been lined up sincerely before the Delhi outskirts. To avoid disruption, it was decided to keep stocks of up to a month's requirement. The most modern and eco-friendly hot mix plant was imported from Italy and set up at site. The plant was crucial to timely completion of the runway and terminal access roads. Meanwhile, vendors were encouraged to move their fabrication units to the project site to cut down on logistic delays. We wanted to make sure as much as possible to have control of ourselves so we bring the raw materials in and then we would shape them before excavation started the site of the runway was being evaluated active and animated despite his 70 years rc reiki was the mastermind behind the plan and design of the new runway the runway was envisioned such that the entire system could handle over 70 aircraft movements at peak hours. But when the master plan changed, so did the direction of the runway. Now, this posed a rather unique problem. The design and construction of Delhi's new runway was battling an unusual force. Simulation showed that there was a nearly 80 feet high Hindu god Shiva statue in the flight path. Typically, incoming aircrafts must clear 1.4 kilometers of runway before they can touch down. But this was not possible due to the statue and its height. This meant all flights must land almost 2 kilometers after the runway actually starts forcing the pilots to use full brakes and reverse thrust to slow down before the runway ran out. This was extremely dangerous 
and could lead to accidents. Lowering the statue or relocating it would no doubt raise religious sentiments and could take months. Simulations are done and detailed calculations and flight paths studied. Here were the best engineering minds looking for a solution. So I started the engineers to understand, tell me what is the way out. Sir, we had to shift by 10 degrees. If we shift by 10 degrees, whole sort of whole plan has been got disturbed. So I told them, tell me, till what degree keep the Shiva had to come out? We found 3 degrees. I fixed the runway and go ahead. They were shocked. Sir, nowhere happens sir, like this. At last, a solution emerged. The new runway was planned at a slant of 3 degrees from the original and was eventually extended by 1,460 meters to be compliant with air safety standards. At 4.43 kilometers, runway 1129 is one of Asia's longest runways. This allows planes to approach and land safely. Construction finally began. But there was another problem. The site of the new runway had been a swamp for several decades. This had grave consequences for the new runway. This meant that soil on the runway site had very low load-bearing capacity, not enough to take aircraft load and landing impact. Now, ultimately, the load that is imposed by the aircraft has to be transmitted to the soil only. Now, if the soil has a bearing capacity which is far lower, it only means that your pavement thickness must increase correspondingly so that this load is transferred over the larger area of the soil. The solution, to strengthen the soil by mixing it with cement and using glass grid fabric between the layers to increase the bond between them. First time in the country, we did this base layer with a cement-treated base. The aim was to design it for next-generation aircrafts like the A380s with takeoff weight of 550 tons. For the terminal structure, the real challenge was to keep the design simple and construction well planned. A lot was at stake. How will all this come together without chaos and wasteful mistakes? Meanwhile, the existing domestic airport needed urgent attention. The existing facilities were creaking under the huge increase in traffic, both of passenger and aircraft movements. The domestic terminals were designed for 12 million but were already handling 16 million passengers. Improvement works had to be carried out in a saturated terminal. So it was, it was a stupendous task, I would say. No other airport in the world has actually gone through this kind of a rigor. GMR went on a war footing to solve this problem. We felt certainly there is an important need that we have to start a new terminal to decongest and also parallelly make them ready for T3. Terminal 1D was built to ease the pressure in the interim. Over 30,000 workers were on site in peak summer through dust storms, the monsoons and foggy winters. Often they worked in precarious conditions, manning heavy machinery. At times, power would be intermittent, leaving electrical cranes hanging dangerously. Men would be caught in lifts and in darkness. Uninterrupted power was a key word for Sujit Nag. Highly disciplined and process-driven, Nag had to be on top of it all the time. There was no room for mistakes. An electrical engineer by qualification, Sujit had worked in the US, UK and Asia setting up power plants. Mammoth projects with pressured deadlines. But he had never worked on a mega structure like this one. His main responsibility was to power the construction works and later the terminal T3 which would have millions of passengers walk through it from all parts of the globe.
very basic of having the power supply from the distribution company that was not ready. So obviously we have to carry out our temporary arrangement. The biggest challenge is that I commission the system and at the same time I give the power supply to the operational team. Anil Dhawan, head and construction manager of T3 was a man on the move. He is athletic and passionate about fitness, whether he is on site or in office. In a military-like manner, Anil led the team that constructed the terminal. Anil's big challenge was to assemble the roof. The expanse of the roof and the pier spread over 45 acres. And an 18,000 ton steel structure was to be installed on top of it. The GMR team went over every engineering detail with a fine tooth comb. Was the design sound? What kind of equipment was needed to achieve this task? What are the specifications that you would be actually... Anil needed to find answers soon. Any delay in completing the roof would have cataclysmic effects on the costs. They had to cover an area of 45 acres with structural steel that was fabricated and brought in from Singapore. The critical element was the girders which came in dimensions of 5 to 10 meters each. For engineering purposes, the roof was divided into the land side and air side and further divided into six smaller units for efficient handling and placement. Each of the six units weighed heavier than an A380 aircraft. We allowed ourselves about six months to, do, to actually uh, uh, complete the roof from start to finish. There was no room for error. Erecting the roof was a key milestone in terms of the project timeline, as it was only after this that all the other civil and technical works followed. The weather was a key factor here. Our original plan was to, uh, uh, to have the roofing uh, installed uh, by uh, April of 2009. The monsoons were only five months away and GMR had to finish the roof structure before the rains lashed through Delhi. Anil's team had been preparing intensely to begin fitting the roof structure and they were now ready to start. Each of the units were first assembled at the 10 meter departure level. Then raised 18 meters using computer-operated hydraulic jacks. Every millimeter lift had to be done in unison. Its alignment checked multiple times. A minute glitch could have disastrous consequences on the project timeline. Engineers were on edge as this sort of lift required utmost precision. Each lift took about six to eight hours. For designing of the lifting system took for us two months and get the jacks required for us to get into there took another two months. So really to re physically to start at site four months backwards we did on the table. 22 months left to go. The terminal building was rising fast. The man who will turn this into one of India's most intelligent buildings had a challenging time ahead. That the airlines cannot connect to the back office. Davesh Shukla was young, hungry and powered by a strong creative streak to create something, one of its kind. If his IT systems failed, the entire airport would collapse. Bring in efficiencies, better operation procedures, and make people's lives more easier. And at the end of the day, that's what integration is about. By the time we finished, it was more than 75 systems that we started integrating together. If Davish has his way, then his IT systems will connect every system in the airport. From check-in counters, baggage handling, 
airport screens. Lighting. Passenger movement systems like boarding bridges, emergency systems like the fire department and key services like immigration. It is practically the lifeblood of the airport. The aim being to make for a faster turnaround of planes taking off and landing and most importantly giving the passenger a smooth experience. Meanwhile on the runway, Reiki and his team were on the last leg to finishing the construction. They now had the challenge of delivering a high-tech runway. Here's the problem. There was a dense fog that settled over Delhi during winter that resulted in very poor visibility. Flights were either cancelled or delayed as they were unable to land or take off in these conditions. To make matters worse, the runway site was close to a green belt, so the intensity of the fog was even higher around here. To counter the thick fog, it was decided that the runway was to be made CAT 3B compliant, which meant it will allow flights to land and take off even when visibility is as low as 50 meters. 50. 40, 30, 20. An Indian origin Singaporean citizen, Roy, is a people's person, but he had no easy task. He is responsible for everything that enables movement in the terminal. Travelators, passenger bays, and baggage belts. He had to set up the complicated maze of belts that would safely transport and handle 12,800 bags per hour. The expected footfall by 2020 was projected to be over 60 million. We actually went into Changi Airport, uh, KLIA, uh, Hong Kong, CLK, uh, including Munich and uh, Heathrow, London. So there we actually try to understand what exactly the best practices they follow. The baggage handling system design was a complex one. Terminal 3 has a state-of-the-art complex that features the common-use terminal equipment baggage handling system with explosive detection technology for greater efficiency and security. Once the passenger checks in their bags, the bags go through a number of checks. At first, if a bag going through the X-ray check is found to be suspicious, it is automatically separated and diverted through another channel. If that is actually clear, the bag will go to the respective destination. And if it's not clear, we have actually a team of uh, security experts who will actually visualize these images and interpret their uh, content into it. And if it is accepted, it will be going to the respective destination. And if it is rejected, it will go to the next level of screening, which is actually our CT screening, where it will actually slice the bag into 65 different uh, pieces, inspect and take a decision. Where if it is actually rejected again, it will actually go into a, uh, a team of experts, then again reviewing those images. From there, accepted bag will go to the destination. Rejected bag will actually go into a level four screening area. Work on the baggage handling system began and the key contract was awarded to Siemens. In other parts of the terminal, glass was being fitted. Flooring was simultaneously being laid and was closely supervised. Laser-guided measurement tools were used to ensure that over 100,000 square meters of granite tiles imported from Bahrain were properly aligned. Yes, like this. This is perfect. With multiple vendors at work, clashes broke out. It threatened to upset the schedule, result in cost overruns and engineering nightmares.
so in September 2008, GMR brought in the BIM or the 3D Building Information Modeling Software. You fed in all information and technical specifications of each aspect, bar, baggage handling, IT and security and it simulated conflict areas, programmed the flow of work and resources required. This stage of construction was the most pressured. I think this was probably the only project, the first project to have employed that and to have actually developed a 3D model where all the obstructions were actually looked at and, and cleared prior to the installation. We saved cost, we saved time and we were able to actually produce a quality product. Sujit Nag had an added brief to ensure that the airport was environment friendly and LEED certified. Temperatures in Delhi range from 5 degrees in winter to an extreme almost 45 degrees in summer. All the glass meant higher power usage to keep the area cool and comfortable for passengers. It was a tricky balance of maintaining good lighting conditions and keeping the heat out. The roof was designed with slits to take advantage of and use natural light. A central monitoring system, CMS, is used to control automatic sensors that detect day and night times and sets temperature and light accordingly to use the least energy. We are the first airport that we achieved. No other airport in the world, they have got a green building certification in gold category. It's action stations at all ends and the deadline is crashingly close. Will everything come together in time? Meanwhile, Anil was racing against time to finish the roof before the monsoons arrived. On the air side, GMR adopted the pull method to install the roof. Cranes carried the massive structural steel girders to the top of the tower where each section was assembled and pulled to an intermediary level. Finally, with four massive horizontal pulls, the roof layout was completed. Week after week, 18,000 metric tons of structural steel was fabricated, assembled and raised. The roof of the terminal and the pier spread over 1.3 million square meters. The seven-layer sheeting system was designed to provide the highest degree of insulation and sound deadening. Finally, the roof was covered and completed. It was a key milestone. Engineers and vendors already at work on site redoubled their efforts, now adding all the elements that turned what is said to be India's largest post-independence public building into its most prestigious airport. Suspended from the roof were a number of essential services like the air conditioning, fire prevention sprinklers and lighting fixtures. All these had to be in place before the false ceiling hid them away from the view of the visitors. For the ceiling, l &T was called in. The false ceiling contractor got into the job and then realized that there's such a massive area that all the false ceiling people in India put together could not manage this. So we had to train our own people, get them inside. On the air side, a complex set of processes were at play. Roy oversaw the installation of the passenger boarding bays. These were manufactured in China and Japan and transported to the project site in Delhi. They are delicate units that fit into the aircraft door at one end and at the terminal on the other. Any damage to the units would render them useless or dangerous to install. July 2009, Roy and his team were tracking progress. Then one night, he received a call. Two of the trucks transporting the delicate passenger bays had overturned in an accident. The bays were badly damaged. With just eight months to go, it was impossible to manufacture new units. Roy had to come up with some other solution. Tried to actually recover these two units, but it was not possible because of misalignment. And we, together with the factory team members, sat together and diverted two bridges which were actually meant for other uh, airports, converted that with our dimension 
and uh, transported back on a timely basis. Roy and his team started installing the bays. It took six hours to install each one and there were 78 bays to be installed. It was high alert on all fronts. All departments were working furiously 24 by 7 to complete construction, fittings and interiors. In about 180 days, starting January 2010, all systems were to be put to test in a 24-week drill, the Operational Readiness and Airport Transfer, or ORAT. Andrew Harrison was a man living on the edge. He is the Chief Operating Officer for Delhi International Airport. He led the Operational Readiness and Transition to the new Integrated Terminal 3. Before joining GMR, Harrison had worked with TBI, Gatwick and JFK airports. But in India, its people and its work culture were all new to him. We engage Munich Airport, who have successfully done ORAT in a number of airports, uh, including Bangkok, including Hyderabad. And uh, we engage them because they have a lot of experience. But very importantly, we had a team built around them so that that experience and that knowledge could be transferred to our team. Were construction and systems ready on time? Did they pass the tests Harrison put them through? You are professionals, act as professionals. Finally, the ORAT, which is a test run of live airport scenarios, begins. For six months, 56 trial drills using 50,000 mock passengers were conducted to test all systems and processes, each one a little tougher than the one before. Here is one scenario. The baggage handling system had to be tested with over 27,000 dummy bags and identification tags created for 36 flights. All check-in bags had to be tagged with a code to enable automated identification so the bags could be sorted and loaded into the respective airlines without glitches. Any error could hinder the check-in and boarding process and result in flight delays. GMR had to make certain airport staff were fully prepared to operate the complex five-level automated baggage system and this needed meticulous planning. It was painstaking and exhausting but had to be done. This is the paging announcement. There are also a number of systems like check-in counters and flight schedules that had to work together seamlessly. A difficulty is the airline back office connectivity that the airlines cannot connect to the back office. But all was not well with the terminal's IT system. February 2010, Davesh was suddenly close to breaking point. Problem is ORAT has started. Okay, so we're starting the Merely a month left for completion and a couple of months before opening day, he realized that the IT network design for the airline back office system did not meet the requirement of the airlines. So that would mean that we cannot open the airport up. Uh, or if we open the airport up, the airlines cannot do the back office functionality. And that would cause a huge grief to the airlines and uh, grand handlers. So at that point, we thought that if we don't get this right, then I think we're going to have an issue with the airport operation. Managing people was equally tough. One big challenge for Andrew was changing the mindsets of the workers and training them to use the new technology. Opening was now just a month away. The operations control room under Andrew was monitoring every square inch of the airport. Over 3,000 surveillance cameras rolling 24 by 7. The artwork and finishes team was also on overdrive overseeing installation of elements that gave Terminal 3 its character. Project head I.P. Rao was on one of his many rounds of inspection. Before he gave the thumbs up for opening day, he had to ensure all bottlenecks were cleared and there were minimal teething problems. Change was about to set in. Delhi was set to unveil Terminal 3, an extraordinary dream. 
37 months of hard work and challenges. But for the passenger, GMR needed to ensure it was smooth sailing right from check-in to baggage screening, clearing security and enjoying the retail and food and beverage experience. All in good time to board the flight and guarantee a hassle-free transit. On 3rd of July 2010, the much-anticipated Terminal 3 was inaugurated by Prime Minister Manmohan Singh and Congress Chairperson Sonia Gandhi. This airport terminal establishes new global benchmarks. It also exemplifies our country's resolve to bridge and bridge fast enough the infrastructure deficit in our country. The IGI airport was now geared to welcome sports people and delegates from 71 nations for the Commonwealth Games. Ten days later, 14th of July 2010, the departure gates of the swanky new terminal were opened to check in the first set of passengers. Down below the baggage conveyor belts swiftly rolled into action. Out on the apron, the fire tenders, refueling vehicles fell into place. The first commercial flight docked at Terminal 3, bringing in travelers who marveled at this first-of-a-kind structure in India. I'm actually stunned. I love it. I'm really glad that we've managed to do this. And it's definitely one of the better airports I've been to. After 37 high-pressure months for the GMR-led team, T3 in New Delhi is now a visible symbol of new India and her new economy. We are very happy that uh, we are also meeting all the other, you know, we can, uh, the same standard of other airports internationally. Means whenever we used to come here, you know, it was always a bit of a disappointment. But now, you know, I think we have come over that and we are very, very proud. I can imagine I should have 400 contractors used to work, 35,000 used to work, managing them, coordinating them, getting into the master construction. The relief is, of course, is on the top of the world. We feel that we are creating national assets and uh, it's an opportunity of a lifetime. It was a great learning. I would say great learning in terms of how to deal with people, how to um, get the complex issues crystallize into simple issues and go after that and get it delivered. God has given the opportunity to serve the country and it will be a landmark for another 60 years. People can remember GMR name and our team name. Policies of the government is uh, this. We can do anything. It is a Indian entrepreneurship at, uh, achievement. Delhi Airport is giving a, a big uh, pride moment is given to me. If you have a good attitude, a good intention, then you can do it.